So whatever is relevant in this context of Madhumeha, we are practicing now. Okay. So another one is Vakrasana. In the uh, picture we have seen yesterday. Okay, Vakrasana. First, you can. This also. These three asanas are having different uh, types of practices in the field. Okay. So one type I am just showing you. Keeping again, starting from Dandasana, the starting position, bending the leg like this, one side. Okay, and the opposite hand you will be using. So we are starting from Dandasana, bending the leg like this. Okay, opposite hand you will be raising up, breathing in and raising up. Okay, and you have to bend the little like this. Okay, crossing your leg and see you have to touch like this. Okay, for patients, it will be very difficult uh, for them to reach this level uh, sometimes. Okay, so you make sure that they are doing this type of practice in the beginners level. Okay, when they are practicing this for a long time, uh, if they are practicing it uh, daily for a long time, you can see that that flexibility increases and they can do this movement very easily. So here, breathing in and Twisting and doing like this, and tell them to turn in the opposite direction like this. And you can see a twisting movement here, here, and here. Okay, so which gives an inter internal massage for the pancreas, which is believed to increase or stimulate the action of pancreas. Okay, in coming back by breathing in and breathing out. Then relaxing in Shithila Dandasana. Shithila means breaking or to break. Okay, so this is Shithila Dandasana, just opposite to Dandasana. Tell the patient to relax and take deep breath. Okay, so Vakrasana can be practiced with the opposite uh, side also. Okay, then another one is Artha Malchiyendrasana, which is also having different types of practices. Okay, so one. One is like this. You have to keep your heel close to your opposite hip joint, and the other leg like this. Okay. Again, here also opposite hand will be crossing the leg and coming like this. This is Artha Malchendrasana, and you can see me. I am holding my hand on the foot. Okay. Again, a twisting movement here. Okay, the same way, similar to Vakrasana, hands up and relaxing in Shithila Dandasana. Okay, and uh, as I told you, it will be very difficult in the beginner's classes. So you can tell the patient, first practice like this. Okay, and another practice is there to improve the flexibility of uh, what to say, hip joint and knee joint. You can tell them to practice like this, this butterfly pose, very easy, okay. But it will be very difficult to sit like this, okay. So some patients will be doing like this only. So gradually you can make sure that they are coming to the correct posture and make sure that their back bone is straight. So a little bit lightning is there. Uh, my voice is clear now. Network issue, any issue is there? No, ma'am. You can continue, ma'am. Okay. okay, so uh, crossing the fingers and keeping it like this, okay, and this practice ensure that uh, you can, what to say, gradually improve the patient's uh, flexibility and uh, make them practice the difficult poses like Vakrasana, Artha Malchendrasana and all, okay. This practice is another type of Salabhasana, okay, breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. This is the moment. Okay. This can be practiced along with the loosening practices in the beginning. Loosening practices also. Okay. So these are the uh, one more poses there. Gomukhasana. Gomukhasana also will be very comfortable for thin people. It will be difficult for obese patients. Okay. First, you have to bend the leg like this, and you can see one knee joint is coming over the other okay so now it resembles go mukha the face of a cow that is why the asana is named as go mukha asana okay here also there is a controversy that is 
which hand should be up okay so usually in general practice which leg is on the top opposite hand will be going up okay so here left leg is on the top so tell the patient to raise the right hand up and the other hand will be going like this and if you can look at the back and um, this is the final pose looking at the back or touching at the back and make sure that your head is coming in the line of your elbow like this this is the final pose i know it will be very difficult for patients obese patients okay but with gradual practice you can make sure that they can practice this practice this bhumukasana pakrasana and arthavalkendrasana in a very easy manner clear so after that tell them to just loosen their hands and legs and move to sidila dandasana okay two three deep breath okay then next is the pranayama session okay pranayama usually uh, i told you sectional breathing anulom vilom and kapal bhati we used to advise and kapal bhati if the patient is having cardiac complaints and all uh, don't tell them to practice it okay so they can practice pranayama in any uh, backbone straight position vajrasana sukhasana sukhasana means simply crossing the legs and sitting or padmasana artha padmasana any poses they can offer but make sure that your, the patient spine is erect okay so first we will start with kapal bhati uh, i'm not sure whether you can see the movement or not okay that uh, abdominal muscle movement i don't have that much belly fat so it will be little difficult for uh, difficult to see okay visible movements will not be there but i'll try okay so passive inhalation and the active exhalation sometimes the sound may get affected with the breathing movements okay i'll just show you two three uh, rounds okay passive inhalation inhalation and the active exhalation okay and when you are teaching the patient usually they will be moving the shoulders and all, lots of unwanted movements will be there so tell them to focus on, only on the abdominal movement okay even in the beginning level you can tell them to keep the hands like this and practice so they can feel the movement on their hands okay so once they are getting used for the practice you can tell them to adopt chin mudra yesterday somewhere asking about the importance of mudra okay so for any uh, meditative posture then you are practicing meditation and all the best option is chin mudra okay so uh, when we come to clinical yoga in my practice i use chin mudra and chinmaya mudra uh, mainly okay yesterday there was a question like that so only these two mudras i used to uh, uh, tell them to practice okay then coming to the second one sectional breathing okay and i told you, you know there was a study going on for reversing diabetes and in that one the main uh, or the easy uh, practice they used to advise was sectional breathing because if the patient is having belly fat or any other complaints also this sectional breathing is very easy and they can follow it very uh, easily okay so if you are dividing your lungs into three compartments okay your lungs start from here here is the diaphragm starting from here to here right so the same thing you have to remind your patient and tell them to put three imaginary lines okay so in the beginning they will be feeling the lower part then the middle part then the upper part okay so you can give the commands like this so i will be telling and doing so uh, i don't know how whether you can uh, visible uh, it will be visible or not but tell them to pay, uh, keep the hands in either in chin mudra or they can keep like this okay then first filling the lower portion middle upper holding for a while coming down first from upper 
middle and lower okay so for this practice you can tell them count 1 2 and 3 when i am counting and doing it will not be pro in a proper way okay so you, when you are giving command to your patient will be very easy for them okay i will be showing in my finger i am doing so now it's clear i think okay so the that moment you, you can see on your patient's body and you tell the patient to experience that moment okay clear that is sectional breathing and next is anulom vilom usually we start with left side okay so first tell the patient to close the right nostril and the mudra adopted is this one last two fingers and the thumb okay thumb for the right side and last two fingers for the left side okay starting from right right toes left in right ah right in left ah left in right out at a stretch you can give 10 rounds okay so right in left out where, from where which side you are inhaling exhale through the opposite side from there you start the inhalation and exhale through the opposite nostrils this is the practice okay so we have completed three types of breathing practices next is the meditation set okay meditation uh, different people will be using different techniques for meditation okay so i used to tell them to sit in any meditative pose and concentrating on their uh, breathing okay and some command should be given okay so if you are ready you can just simply uh, sit on your position in a backbone erect position okay and concentrate close your eyes and concentrate on your breathing slowly you can cut down the thoughts okay so for cutting down the throw the thoughts observe your sense organs first what are the five sense organs what all touch you can feel See if there is a fan or if the climate is too hot what you will be feeling on your skin okay then go to the next sense what taste is coming into your mouth what smells are coming to your nostrils okay and even after closing the eyes some things are coming to your eyes so observe each and every sense perception okay so this close observation make sure that you are cutting down it one by one okay and slowly focus to a single point and breathing concentrating on your breathing make sure that you are concentrating or you are focusing to that particular point or you can tell the patient to think about a particular object in their mind or you can tell them to visualize any scene which makes them happy in the mind it can be their deity any goddess or any flower or whatever object makes them happy let them think about that in their mind so it makes sure that the thoughts are getting concentrated okay and you can tell the uh, client or patient to observe the breathing okay and one more advice i used to uh, tell them if they have any uh, problem in concentration if it is uh, a kids group they if they have any problem like hyperactivity and all I used, to, i used to suggest them some techniques like this uh, counting down technique this can be done by lying down in shavasana or by sitting in meditation uh, meditative pose okay so uh, they can choose any three digit number and slowly count down to number 1 okay and at that time also their mind will be concentrating only on this counting okay so don't tell them to count upwards because very easily uh, they can do it okay one two three means they will do it very easily 
but counting down means it's a tricky task for your mind it will be difficult task for your mind so mind will be concentrating only on that clear yes. and that practice is very good for especially those who are having stress and all and they, those who don't have emotional control uh, menopausal age group ladies okay this uh, particular task or particular practice helps them a lot okay and last coming to the quick relaxation technique uh, dr kavita can i get the time 8:54 doctor okay so last 5 minutes or 5 to 10 minutes we used to tell them to relax so now i am just lying down and i will be telling uh, the command which i am giving to my patient okay okay so lying down like this those who want to practice along with me you can practice in your bed or your yoga mat okay lying down in shavasana make sure that legs are apart palms facing the roof your body completely on the floor body weight to the ground okay so this is the uh, essence of the yoga class the yoga nidra yesterday in the group uh, somewhere discussing about the yoga nidra part okay so how much you can make it uh, what to say uh, more comfortable for the patient that much you have to do because uh, there is another question among patients what is the difference between simple exercise or gym workouts and yoga this is the major difference after a proper yoga class the patient will not feel exhausted they will get more energy okay so tell the patient to loosen their body parts one by one first feet loosen your feet you can feel the flow of prana relax completely if you are practicing by your own you can tell your mind your subconscious mind this command you can feel that your legs are relaxing your ankle joint the calf muscles knee joint muscles of your thigh hip and in between these commands or in, in between that uh, commands or uh, before uh, what to say when you go to each and every body part in between you can keep a gap of uh, 20 to 30 seconds or you can divide the time accordingly okay as we have to complete little uh, in a faster way i'm just skipping okay now coming up to the skip joint we have completed so you can tell that the patient uh, you can tell the patient that the lower body is completely relaxed okay when i am doing i am telling to my mind i can feel that my body is getting relaxed so if you are practicing along with me you can feel that you are getting relaxed all your internal organs are relaxing your abdomen muscles of your abdomen chest back muscles shoulders your hands your entire body is relaxing you can feel the rhythm of your heart the flow of your prana your neck is relaxing have a pleasant face your brain is relaxing inhale the positive energy and exhale out the negative energy and after this uh, quick relaxation commands also you can tell them to practice the countdown exercise 
usually when you give the command properly sometimes the patient may fall into sleep which is normal okay and you can tell them to slowly turn to their left side this is also optional what i have learned from my gurus i am telling you uh, turning to the left side okay and slowly getting up like this okay and after that we will be ending the class with the yoga mudra again here uh, many prayers are there so uh, in the beginning we have standard yoga na chitasya padena vaja so here i am using another one sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pasyantu ma kasit dukha bhag bhave ending with the yoga mudra for yoga mudra you have to keep your hands like this tying like this and keeping at your back and bending your head forward make sure that your buttocks and heels are close together and bending forward and touching the forehead on the ground so again for obese people it will be very difficult so which pose is comfortable for them they can sit in that pose and do the forward bending okay this make sure that after the practice here you can see heart is coming compared to your brain heart is in an uh, upper level okay so which ensures that flow to the brain okay and ensures that you are getting energy more energy more prana flow okay slowly coming up and if the patient is having again vertigo uh, sinusitis and all also you uh, you can tell them to do it in a uh, what to say mild mild way okay so by this we are ending the live session if you have any doubts we can clear it can you switch off the video for a while